1843, Charles Dickens was 31 years old and in serious financial trouble. He had spent a great deal of money during his recent tour of America, and now, back in England, his wife Kate was pregnant with their fifth child. Though Dickens had already written successful books like Oliver Twist and The Old Curiosity Shop, the sales of his latest novel, Martin Chuzzlewit, were declining rapidly. His publishers had decreased his monthly pay and he was forced to borrow money against his insurance policies. Dickens needed to write something that would sell and he was to find his inspiration in an unlikely source. In the spring of 1843, Dickens read a parliamentary report on child labour. The document featured thousands of pages of oral testimony from child workers, some as young as five, who worked gruelling industrial jobs. Because Dickens had worked 10-hour days in a boot-blacking factory as a child, the plight of the exploited children resonated strongly with the author. Child labour had been one of the many negative results of the Industrial Revolution, which had transformed England and much of Europe and the United States during the 19th century. The introduction of the steam engines powered by coal allowed for factory machines to manufacture products in massive quantities. A class of industrialists, merchants and ship owners accumulated most of the wealth, while the working classes toiled long hours for little pay, working in small spaces with hot and dangerous machinery. As more and more people moved to the cities for work, urban areas grew populated and overcrowded, Wages were low and many families were forced to send their children to work in the factories and mines. In 1834, a poor law was introduced. The law stipulated that those unable to care for themselves could stay in workhouses. However, these dwellings usually contained substandard living conditions. Many people instead turned to crime out of necessity. Those who were caught were sent to prisons and often put to work in gruelling ways. Victorian prisons featured the very first treadmills, which prisoners walked on to generate energy for grain mills or water pumps. At this festive season of the year, Mr Scrooge, said the gentleman, taking up a pen, it is more than usually desirable that we should make some slight provision for the poor and destitute, who suffer greatly at the present time. Are there no prisons, asked Scrooge, Plenty of prisons, said the gentleman, laying down his pen again. The treadmill and the poor law are in full vigour, then, said Scrooge. In October 1843, Dickens took a long walk after attending a charity fundraising event in Manchester. It was there he conceived of the idea of a Christmas carol, which he proceeded to write hastily over the six weeks that followed. A Christmas Carol drew heavily on the Gothic genre, which was highly popular in Victorian England. Gothic texts featured eerie and mysterious atmospheres and often incorporated criminal, supernatural or romantic elements. Other conventions of the genre included flawed protagonists, strange visions, omens and nightmares. The settings of Gothic stories were also important and often took place in atmospheric and isolated locations like castles and graveyards. Ghost stories were a particularly popular form of Gothic fiction and were often filled with flickering candles, strange noises, shadowy houses and malevolent spirits. These stories tapped into Victorian society's widespread fascination with the supernatural. Mediums were in great demand, holding seances where spirits were summoned and furniture was seen to move or float. Spirit photography was also in vogue in the latter half of the 19th century and relied on photographic tricks to depict ghostly apparitions. Dickens also significantly chose to set his story during the Christmas season. The holiday had its roots in the pagan winter solstice festival known as Yule, an event filled with feasting, drinking, sacrifice and increased supernatural activity. Dickens' story not only enhanced the association between Christmas time and the spiritual world, it would also help lay the foundation for the modern Christmas holiday.
From the Middle Ages, Christmas grew to be celebrated on the 25th of December and associated with the birth of Christ. Festivals and church services were held annually in its honour. Yet by the 19th century, many of the holiday's traditions, like Christmas carols, had declined in popularity. For much of the population of England, Christmas was little more than a two-day reprieve from gruelling industrial life. The Christmas holiday began to undergo a gradual transformation following Queen Victoria's ascension to the throne in 1837. Her husband, Prince Albert, brought over the tradition of the Christmas tree from his native Germany in 1840. When an engraving was published in 1848 featuring the Queen, the Prince and their children decorating their tree, the Christmas tree became immediately fashionable. Three years later, Sir Henry Cole began selling the first Christmas cards in his art shop in London for one shilling each. Then, in 1847, a confectioner invented the first Christmas crackers. However, it was arguably the publication of A Christmas Carol on the 19th of December 1843 that had the greatest impact on the public's perception of Christmas time. The book was an immediate success and its first print run sold all 6,000 copies in less than a week. More than 15,000 had been sold by the year's end. The book touched its readers and helped imbue Christmas with the values of charity, family, generosity and gratitude. Christmas carols saw a resurgence in popularity following their appearance in the book. To this day, a Christmas carol remains a beloved seasonal favourite both for its eerie narrative and humanitarian message. <laughs>